Next stop, Model Peg Station. Seiko, what up, bro? How you what's, doing, man? What's good, what's good, what's good? What's poppin'? Welcome to the platform, man. Welcome to MPS. Happy to be here. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna just start off right from the beginning, bro. Right. I want you to kind of tell the audience who you are. Okay. Where are you from? You feel me? My name is Seiko from Toronto. I'm an MC. <laughs> Building, yeah. right? mm-hmm. um, let's jump right into it, bro. So, let's start at the beginning of your whole story, man. Yeah. Like, everyone has that, like, start point, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Could you remember when, like, that moment first hit you, or when you were first introduced to hip-hop? Yeah. Um, my uncle, he, uh, he came over because my mom's a nurse. So, he came over to watch us while my mom was doing her clinical. So, like, this was during the 90s, so, like, He just, I guess he was fascinated by, like, American life and shit. And then I was just always riding around with him all day. So he'd just be listening to Coolio, Wu-Tang, Nas, all that type of stuff. And then and then Criss Cross came out. And I I can remember, like, Criss Cross, they had, like, a VHS, like, when they went around to, like, different malls and shit like that. I remember watching that shit with my brother. I'm like, fuck that, everything. I'm trying to do this shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. all that other shit. I'm trying to do this shit. Like, yeah, real that was that moment, yeah. That, that was that moment where I was like, like, yo, oh, fuck. Uh, okay, so right there, you kind of went to my next question. Yeah. I was about to ask you, like, who were the first artists you actually heard growing up? You feel me? Like, who uh-huh. were the first ones you were tapped in with? You mentioned right now Wu-Tang. Yeah. And the whole nine. Yeah. Most remember. The first rap artist I was like, my favorite, my well, my first favorite rapper was Coolio. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it wasn't even, even because it wasn't even like his music. It was just the way how we looked. Like I was like, hey, who the fuck is this guy? Like you know what I'm saying? He looked cool. Like yeah, you know that's what I was thinking. And then I started listening. Obviously later on, like my favorite rapper is Nas. Wow. So I listened to Nas. Um, I listened to like I, I fucking listened to just bare shit. Like it's bare '90s hip hop. Like whatever you Nas. Tribe Called Quest, oh, Mob man. Deep, big fan. Oh, yeah. yeah, Mob Deep, uh, Ransom Hitchcock, all that stuff, like all the all the '90s classics, all like the early 2000s. That's like that's how I kind of grew up on my music. Like, that's, that's the shit I used to listen to. That's yeah. a vibe right there, man. And um, when you were growing up, right? Bro, yeah. What was bumping in your crib, bro? Like, like, um, what do you remember listening to you walk <laughs> right through the house? You know what I mean? Like, what were you on? Oh, uh, what was I on? Yeah. At the time, like, fuck, man. I was listening to, like, 50 Cent and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, obviously, I listened to, like, 50, but my parents, my mom and stuff, like, my parents, they listened to, like, African music. You know? Right. They were listening to, like... Are you bunch. African? Yeah, I am. Where are you from, bro? I'm from Kenya. Kenya. Yeah. Shout out Kenya Ken- one time. Where? <laughs> love, I'm love. Too, Yo, where, where are you from? Hey, Ghana. Hey, Africa. hey. I love the Ghanaians, man. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so in your crib, that's what was bumping. Yeah, they were All just right. bumping their African music, and then there would be, like, students that would come live with me and stuff like that a lot. So they'd be bumping, like, Brandy, Monica, all that type of shit. So also that shit, too, like yeah. R&B. Yeah. Man, Tony know. Braxton and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I be trying to remember, man, yeah. back in the day what was playing in my crib. Man. Yeah. It was all that, too. It was all that? Prince. Yeah, Prince? Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't my get pops. the prince until I was older. You're, we were processing the prince. Yeah, that's prince crazy. Like, and African music too, though. African you know music, Africans is, yeah, yeah. They, they be on that. They be on that, bro. Ah, yeah. hey, that's dope, man. Yeah. And like, when did you decide to rap then? So when all that's going on in your crib, you're listening yeah. to music, you're vibing with it, okay. Yeah. And when did that moment hit? When when I started to rap. I, I always played with it. You know, I always used to play with it as a kid. And then, kind of what happened was, is I remember when Eight Mile came out. Word. At my elementary school, everybody was just about rapping each other, and just the word just came easier for me. Like you know what I'm saying? Word. I'm like, damn, I'm nice. Like, <laughs> and then my cousins all used to all used to just rap and shit. So I used to just be around them. Like my older cousin used to rap, so I used to be around him a lot. So then I used to just you know fucking I'll be like, yo, is this sixteen good or, or not? Like that. Were but you I never, rapping? Pardon? You were battle rapping too? Yeah, yeah I started. That's that's how I started yeah. as a kid. I started battle rapping. I was like, I was like the beginning. I didn't even make, like, I, I, like from, I'm trying to think, like, the ages. Like, it's just been a minute. Like, from 9 to, like, almost, like, 13, I never even recorded a song. I mean, I recorded songs, but it's not like I went to a studio and recorded a song. Right. Most of that skill was from battle rapping or from writing in a verse and showing, like, someone else. Like, like doing you, your own thing, figuring it out. Figuring type it out type Word. shit. So by the time I got to the studio, I was just so, like, it was like whatever to me because I I've been outside with it like yeah. you know for so long so yeah 
That's how it how it's like that too. Yeah. That too. Yeah. I've always hearing that story too, like people just getting into it off of the battle rap <laughs> and like figuring it out. But it feels like it came natural to you type type like Yeah, it, it wasn't it, it came natural. Like I wasn't even I wasn't even trying, like like I was trying, but like it was just like, you know, I like just, just born with it. So you feel like you feel like music chose you or, or did you did you choose music? Like how you feel about that? Like Um Both. Okay. So for me, like me being good at music is just like a cherry on the top of the cake. Like, I think right. I'd still do music if I wasn't, you know, if it wasn't, didn't come natural to me and shit like that. But there's been times where I try to walk away from it. Like, I remember, like, I think it was like five, six years ago, like, I got, like, a, a big boy job. Like, I, like I went in and, and I was going to get a big boy job. I went through the whole application process and everything. But I was still going to the studio late nights and shit like that. So I ended up getting the job. But I had to like go and sign these papers, the employment papers. Like you have to go, uh, they hand you a contract. You got to sign the contract, right? right? So the day before that, I was in the studio, and it was like me, uh, one of my mentors who really taught me how to rap, Anthony. Okay. Um, and it was an engineer and Tory Lanez's brother and his, his brother Yoko, and the uh, next guy. And at the time, that was like the like, I'd never been around nobody like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? i just been doing it at that level. So I have to go sign these papers in the morning, and, and he's playing records, and I'm playing records. And he was, he was the first person to really take in my shit. So I, I wasn't as good as I am now or whatever, but he really took the time to listen to what How I was doing. Was this? this was five, six years ago. I friggin' so, he, so we were really up until, like, 5 a.m. I have to be at the downtown, again, because I live in the east. I have to be downtown for 8. So I remember I put on my suit and shit, and like <laughs> I'm like I had to take the I take the bus to the train because at the time I didn't drive, and then I'm taking the train down and shit like that. I'm fucking I'm nervous, yo. I'm trying Damn. to I'm trying to quit rap. Oh, I want a big boy job. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the the office wasn't too far away from the the go train station, so I'm literally walking to the go train station. I'm sweated and shit, like. I'm just, you know, I'm not supposed to be in a suit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, uh, that's what, that's the day I learned. And then I, I went to the office and then the guy's like, yo, you just need to cool, cool off or whatever. And then when I went into the office to go sign the papers, the dude had like all of my press clippings. Like, what? yo, this dude played with De La Soul and he's like, yo, honestly, this can't be a part of this company. Like, I, I, I would love to have you, but yeah. Oh, and this is a real, this is a, real, it's a 100% a real story. So because he's seen that, Mm-hmm. You were like kind of like working on your craft. And stuff. Yeah. He was just like, nah. Yeah. You ain't pulling up the work. Yeah. It's five, six years ago when you're yeah. a rapper, like, you know? And then I remember I went down. I remember, like, yo, I was, I was hella, like, yeah, I was like, yeah, damn, pressed, like, bro. I was, I would go outside there, and then my, my brethren, he came out of another interview. I'm like, and we didn't even know, like, we're supposed to see each other. I was like, how did yours go? He's like, shit. <laughs> how did yours go? <laughs> shit. <laughs> yo. Yeah, man. Work, and and I just looked up to God. I was like, Damn. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then, so then check this out then, right? Yeah. When I first ran across your music, the one thing that stuck out was your voice, man. Yeah. And that style. Mm-hmm. And I was just so mad, curious to figure out, like, how did you find your voice, man? It's a lot of art yeah. with that, trying to find that individuality in music. Yeah. So. How did I find my voice? Yeah. Uh, my voice has always been, like, the same. Like, from, when I, from the time I started rapping, that was the thing that kind of stood out, like, the most, like, most the most times like people would love my voice and people would love the punch signs I'd come up with. Right. But it was just like natural. The other stuff obviously you need to work, but like that that stuff came naturally to me. But like my voice has always been how it's been. So like it's like when I see people in the comments and shit saying what they say and shit like that, I'm like, yo, if you if you read my comments, there's people who know me from like thirteen, they're like, yo, that's cat. Like <laughs> in your comments, yeah, 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 no, no. Who who oh. will defend me and be like, oh, yo, he's not trying to sound com- like, com- like, yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, not yeah, trying yeah. to sound like who you know right. whoever, and and they'll be like, yo, I've known him since he's thirteen. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, had yeah. the same voice, like you know what I'm saying. So yeah, I just, my voice has always been the same, but as I I've, as I've become more confident as a man, it's made me a better artist. Right, it's, it's, it's different. It's, it, you build more confidence. Yeah, yourself. more confidence. You know, it's it's different because. You know, a lot of music is it's really from the inside. So as as clean as your inside is, it it reflects in in the sound. I think so. That's a gem right there. Yeah. For the people listening right there, man. That's a gem. <laughs> Facts. I appreciate that. Ah, yeah. man. And uh, how'd you come with the name Seiko, man? Everyone 
So my real name is Oseko. But everybody called me Seko. Everyone calls me Seko. And then my rap name was Oseko before. And then I just shortened it to Seiko. Just like Seiko. And, it, and it's cool, you know. I, I, I've always, I think it's, I think it's cool that it's, uh, I have a real name and an artist name, you know. It, it's a little... <laughs> It's the energy, yeah, right? it's, it's a little yeah. energy. Like you know what I'm saying. I know, like if someone knows me, they're like Oseko or Oseko, like you know. But yeah. And like, so you start rapping. You got the name down. Your voice is down. Yeah. You know, you pop it. You got it. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, your first couple records though. Mm-hmm. What was the feedback like, man? Fuck. The first couple of records. I remember I did a, <laughs> I did a, uh, I did a song with my cousin. And my song, my cousin ate me. Like, we <laughs> <laughs> got, we got my cousin David. My cousin ate he rap, me. Rap, rap. Like, yeah, he rap, rap. Okay. But the thing is, is like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He really tutored me. Like, you know what I'm saying? He couldn't take it light on me. He knew I, what I could be. So, like, you know. And I remember, like, after that, like, well, after that, I would put out like a couple little songs, like when I'm like 13, whatever. Yeah. But like my first really get getting going, like, I, I think everybody was like, yo, this is like a good bass. You know what I'm saying? This is like a good, good, good bass. Cause I my my story is more like 50 and, and Nipsey Hustle, so I got better. Oh man, yeah. Right. Name my guy. <laughs> yeah. Name so nah, I got better. So Nipsey I had a good 50? bass. Yeah, bro. Those are my niggas, bro. Yeah, yeah. That touched me right now, man. Yeah, R.I.P. the Nip, bro. man. Shout out to 50. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was checking you out, man. I'm trying to go back to your first. You Please. Know, the bass, right? Please. And you, you, you release City on Fire. Yeah. And ending on. Yes. Now, it was crazy because I checked out the videos, right? It was uh-huh. like creative, the process, and I was trying to figure out how you did it, man. Like, how Shit. did you, like, because the quality was even, everything was just on point, right? I appreciate that. So, what was that like? So, for City on Fire, which was, which was before I'm I'll start there. I remember City on Fire, I went to Jamaica, and I just came back from Jamaica. I was just, I was just in, in that, in that space, so I made City on Fire just, you know, Cause I was just, you know, I listened to a lot of reggae, dance hall, and so I was like, "Fuck it." And when it came time to do like the video, it was my friends. Like these are childhood friends that that helped me with it. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't like I went to a production studio or nothing. These are my childhood friends. So we just wanted to make something that for City on Fire that was more gritty. And okay. that, that's really what we were trying to do and make it gritty. And actually, in City on Fire, which is actually it, it, it was it was wild. Like I, I'll never forget. Like. The day that we we shot City on Fire, like finished it, Kobe died that day. Oh damn! I'll never forget having to go shoot that video, and and, and you know, and like you know, like it was just so intense. Yeah. And I think that's what that's what City on Fire was because of what the world was. COVID had, was just about to start happening. It was oh, wild. Man. Yeah. So we were hearing about COVID too. Yeah, we were hearing COVID about COVID. Dropped, and then COVID come in. COVID, COVID came in. Yeah. And y'all, y'all, y'all getting creative with it at the same time. Yeah, I think COVID, I think COVID, yeah, because I shot City on Fire, and then I literally went to the airport, and I, w- I went to Kenya, and then a week after, they closed the borders. So, it was just so intense, because COVID, Damn. Kobe, all this shit, like, yeah. you know? But it, but it turned out, like, City on Fire was crazy, because I felt like it was a special record, but it didn't quite do, like, what it was, Right. I felt like it was supposed to do. And then, I come back. From Kenya, everything locked down. I'm like, damn. <laughs> and then I'd taken all these videos while I was in Kenya. I didn't know I was shooting a video at the time. That's the thing. Oh, so okay. when, I, when I went to Kenya, I was just taking home videos. And then I had to go see my, my pops' family. And then I was with, I was, we were walking around just taking videos and shit like that. And then when I came back home, I made that gong like the song. But I had written it in Kenya. So... I, I I literally was just like, yo, I got these home videos. Uh, my my guy Marty, big ups to him, Visual Redux. He he was like, yo, I'm gonna put it together like like the way how you put it together. Cause my my whole thing for the end dog videos, I wanted it to be like through the wire. So like that was the yo. the base of of of, of Kanye, end dog, yeah, Kanye, Kanye <laughs> man. So big up Marty, big up the fan, yo. yo. Big up. Yeah, that's man, crazy, they did their thing. Man. But that's, yeah. that's a dope story, though. Thank you. Yeah. That's a dope story, man. I'm trying to figure it out, I'm like, how this nigga do this, bro? <laughs> like, how did this nigga do this? It's like clean as hell. I'm yeah. Like, so who's uh, the videographer? Uh, it's Visual Redux, Visual. Marty and Nathaniel. Man, shout out to them niggas, man. Yeah, those okay. guys are amazing. Big up Charlie and Kyron for City on Fire, yeah. There you go. Yeah. There Big you up. go, yeah. hell yeah. Um, 
Okay, so bet. And then I'm doing my research and I'm yeah. looking, I'm looking, and I see killer freestyle, man. <laughs> and I don't want to talk about that right now. Please. But, like, find me in the north, bro. Yes. Linked up with DJ Frank Renatra. Yes. Okay, so start with that. How do you how do you see him and like how this whole thing kind of come about? So when I was on Nice Sound, um, I I had a single out with them, and Frank Renatra was really supporting it. He was like playing it all the time, like on Flow 93.5 and, and shit like that. So I, I had him on Instagram and then like, I was like, so I did two other episodes before I did find me in the, the, the one in I flow. So the last one, I was like, yo, I don't even want to shoot a video for that. I want to go do it at the radio station. So I hit up a couple of the radio stations and then I really wanted to see like, yo, which, which guys would be down to do this. And Frank Vinacho was just hella accommodating. He's like, yo, I love bars. You got to come through and do it. So I just went through and yeah. That's, yeah, that's, what, that's, what, that's what happened. When I seen that, I was like, okay. And um, your stage performance, bro. I read yeah. about one of your freestyles uh-huh. in a club. And like, you were going off, bro. I remember you said something and like, the whole crowd was crazy. You know, like, this nigga wild, bro. This nigga, he's that nigga right now. I like, appreciate you know? that. Yo, how does it feel to perform and like, and like be on that like stage and everyone's just watching you, man? I don't think much about it, to be honest. Word. Yeah. Uh, like, a lot of artists, bro, they are like... It depends. Sometimes yeah. against the groove. Uh-huh. But I feel like with you, you were just... Yeah, it's just like whatever. Even that, I think you're talking about the Clubhouse Jams. Yeah. I didn't even know. Like, I went there early and those guys are my guys. And they're like, yo, you got to open up the show for us. Just, I, yeah. I was, you didn't even know you were playing. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. That was, that was random. Like, like that was... Uh, my, my boy, Henny, came up to me. He's like, bro, we want you to open up the show. Do the intro. So I was like, cool. He's like, yo, you got a freestyle? I said, fuck it. So uh, the whole time I'm just sitting there, I'm like, yo, I better think of something. <laughs> you were sipping? You, you, yeah, yeah, you, I was drinking. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean, thinking, what you like that? I'm like, okay. Yeah, yo, I was drinking. But you know, I, when it was my time, I just, I just went there and didn't try too hard. Just did what I know how to do. Yeah. You, know? you see those stories too, like, you know, when you just, in the moment, and motherfuckers are just vibing with it. Mm-hmm. You learn, like, it's fucking with it. That's mm-hmm. dope, bro. So, so now we come to uh, your latest release, man. Mm-hmm. It's a lot rhythm. Cellar rhythm, yes. Ah, cellar rhythm, there you yes. go. I knew a little messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's yeah, all good. I it's all it, good. But, uh, it's check all this good. out, bro. Yeah. Two times. Yeah. Right? Um, how'd that come about? Like, what, like, that record? Two times is like, that's like actually my friend. Like, you know, like, I, I literally, like, you know, I hang out with him all the time and stuff like that. But Cellar Rhythm was actually a song that was made, like, almost like, I think in like, 20, I think 2021? 2021, that record. Yeah, that's, that's when it was made, but two times wasn't on the record. But it took so long f- to find somebody on the hook. And then basically we was at, I think it was, uh, we were at, we're, I forgot where we were at. We were at some like function. And then my brethren was talking to me. And then he was like, yo, you guys need to talk. So then we talked or whatever. And then he was like, yo, I got a studio at my house. I was like, bro, I think I got to track that. Send it to you because for the longest time it was just blank. Was why, why was it so hard you think to find someone to jump on the record? I don't even know. I, I hit up so many people from Toronto, from overseas, all that type of shit. But I didn't know that the answer was right beside me. Like I didn't know it was my brother that was supposed to be on the, yeah, on the hook. On that record, yeah. <laughs> so okay, so he jumps yeah. on and then fire. Fire, like legitimately, like I sent it to him. I literally took a nap. He sent it back. I listened to it an hour before I sent it to everyone. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. This is exactly <laughs> what I needed. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to Two Times. He's a very talented artist. He's got crazy music drafting. Like, two Times? Him, yeah, Two Where's Times. Where's he from? What's he rapping? He's from Scarborough. East End. Yeah, East End. Shout out yes, Two Times, Shout out Two Times. Shout out Flacco. Shout out Zero. Platform, you heard? Yes, man. See, you guys got to have bro. him on the platform for sure. All right. Um, uh-huh. Man, this is dope, bro. I know yeah. this little introduction you're probably going to pop off again. Like, as you get bigger and bigger, yeah. you're going to keep tapping a, in. And you know what I'm saying? I'll always come back. Don't worry about that. So check this out, bro. Uh, before we wrap this up, yeah, like, yeah. where can people find you at, like, social media-wise? Like, uh, Spotify, YouTube, like... The Official before. Seiko on Instagram. Okay. S-E-K-O on all streaming platforms. And look forward to Serengeti Dawn, the EP, coming soon. Coming, hopefully, in late May. We got to clear these beats. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only hold up once we can clear up these beats then y'all got the project but yeah so hopefully by late May everything will be cleared everything will be good and yeah I'll see y'all then
man. I appreciate you. I man. appreciate you. Station, you thank you. Thank you. Anytime, bro. Thank you guys for having me. Having a good time. We got to tap back in. That's yeah. it.